Perfect, it is 2.5, so let's be Great. punctual. So welcome, Sana. Thanks a lot for joining us, and thanks a lot for, to a lot of attendees who've joined us and stayed with uh, this festival since we started around two sessions back. Um, so this session is very interesting. Now, we were talking about in the introduction to the festival that we didn't want to create another conference. We wanted to have different kinds of concepts. Uh, and this is a concept wherein uh, Sana, who's a, who's a friend, who's a fellow entrepreneur, and uh, who's someone we work very closely with at MetaVest, um, who will be talking to us about landscape of retail sustainable finance products because she's definitely one of the best persons qualified enough to talk about that and Thanks. talk about it in a way that is relatable. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just take two minutes for people who are joining us for this session now to tell you a bit of background on Step Up and Matter West. So um, I'll be the host for the event, uh, and I'll also be channeling the questions to Sana later in the workshop. So uh, my name is Mayur, and I'm the co-founder of Matter West, where we are trying to connect you with sustainable finance by helping you learn, plan, save, and invest in what matters to you. And that's the vision that we are working with. And um, we organized this festival because we wanted to do was, we wanted to get different ecosystem players in sustainable finance onto one platform. And that is what we're trying to do in this inaugural edition. The idea is to do this again and again so that we can demystify sustainable finance and finance for you and me when we want to take a vote with our wallet. And that's the vision that we are working with. So today, if you're tuned in via Zoom, just you can just stay online, it's a continuous stream. And uh, if you're tuning in from Facebook Live, you can join us from there as well. Uh, and we do different sessions on our MatterVest page. So uh, today we've just completed the session on financing SDGs. We will do this session. This session is followed by a keynote by Julie Becker, as well as we will have a panel discussion and a workshop to wrap up the day. And then of course the festival continues tomorrow with some very interesting sessions, uh, as well as a student pitching competition, wherein we have an audience poll as well. So please do join, you have a role to play and talking about sustainable pensions and EU. And yes, these are the wonderful people, including Sana, who we have, who have made this possible so that we can actually start bridging the gap. So I will stop chatting now because uh, this is Sana's session, not mine. And uh, the agenda is this, that we'll have a workshop for 20 minutes. You can start, uh, you can keep asking your questions uh, in the Q&A tab on Zoom. Or if you're watching it on Facebook Live, please ask your question in the comments over there. Our team will also channel it through the Zoom session so we can address both. So with this, I will stop sharing my screen and pass it to Sana so that you can uh, share your screen and take it on from here. Um, yes, one moment, I'm just sharing my screen. Um, okay, one second. go okay i'm just gonna present perfect. can you see my screen it all works all right you can hear me well as well yes perfectly fine so perfect okay then let's start um hi i'm sana Th thanks maya for the really sweet intro um very excited to be here to talk to you a bit more about the perspective of a retail person so people like you and me who are just um looking for solutions um this focus will this um talk will focus um on on the options that you have and um yeah i'll be showing you also tools that you can use to look at your options so let's start uh, my name is Sana and I'm the founder of Sage Fund. Um, we're looking to build a sustainable investment platform um, that makes in investing in sustainable ETFs really easy and automatic. Um, my interest um, started in investing uh, through a personal story. We had a death in the family and we all inherited money. Um, none of us knew what to do with it. And I really did not want my mother to go to Sparkasse and get her advice there. So many years ago, I took it upon myself to learn about um, investing. And yeah, my background is actually in psychology. So I'm it doesn't necessarily come uh, natural to me. Um, so I can understand your concerns. And especially if you are a beginner, it's um, quite hard. There's a lot of options out there. Um, there's a lot of education that you have to do. And I believe the, the, the entry is quite high. 
So with Sage Fund, we are looking to make sustainable investing easy and accessible. Um, so I'll start a little bit about my philosophy behind investing, what it is and why you should do it. Um, and that will frame the conversation towards the options that I believe are best for you if you're starting out as a retail investor. So what is investing? Um, I would say the foundation is that you're sacrificing something of value now for, for something greater in the future. You do this every day in your life. Um, a really prominent example is your education, uh, where you spend many years not working, uh, not earning any money, um, because you know that your education will help enable you to um, have more options on the on the work market and also to earn more money and do more of what you want to do. The same applies to in investing. You are not investing today. You're saving that money. You're being really patient. Uh, you're putting it in the market, which can be um, a bit nerve wracking because you know that you will be making more returns in the future. And so. This, I, I think, the three core reasons as a retail investor as to why you should invest. Number one is your goal is to fight inflation. Um, inflation devalues your money. So I would recommend that any money that is sitting on your bank account that is not going towards your expenses and not, um, and not your emergency money, I believe that you should be investing it. So imagine you have 100K on your account, on your bank account, 14 years later, it will have shrunk in value to 75K. Um, then reason number two, you need to retire well. Um, here, I would also re re um, re uh, recommend investing in the market um, instead of, for example, choosing insurance. Um, don't do this. A lot of people do this in Germany. Um, because you'll just be making a lot more returns. We also underestimate just how long the retirement period is. It's around on average now 30 years. So you will need an average of, of, of one to two million euros um, to make it through this period sustaining your lifestyle. Um, so you really need to start saving for retirement uh, today. And then my favorite reason why I was uh, particularly interested in, in investing is financial freedom. Um, you really have the chance to do more of what you want if you have money. So you can um, you can ch choose to quit a job, you can work fewer hours, you can travel the world. You have just more of the choice to do the things that you desire. Um, here's also a little bit of a quick graph as to what you can expect as a retail in, uh, uh, an investor if you choose different options. This is a 40 year time period. This is the average amount of time that you'll be spending in your career. Um, imagine you start out with um, 20K and, you, and you're saving 500 euro every month. You, you, you will have access to three scenarios. You can leave it on your bank account. Um, you can decide to put it in a savings account or you can put it uh, in a globally diversified portfolio on the market. And you can see that um, the difference between saving and investing is incredibly large. Um, and it's really no increase in, in, in the effort um, during this time period, you're basically uh, waiting for that money. So for this reason, I would really recommend you to invest because this is the difference between ret re uh, uh, retiring with a million more euros than not having that money. So how to think like an, an investor? Mm, if you are a retail investor, um, then I would th th definitely uh, uh, um, recommend to you that you are patient and that you focus on your long-term goals. Uh, there's really no shortcut to, get, to getting rich fast. Um, this is just true also for being healthy um, or succeeding at anything. There's really no shortcut. Um, and also, I do not recommend that you buy, try to buy low and sell high. Don't try to beat the market. Um, a lot of people think that this is investing, but this is actually more speculating and you risk losing money doing this. Most pro most pro professionals who are timing the market lose money. Um, so there's no reason to believe that you will gain money. Um, also, Warren Buffett famously said, if you don't feel comfortable owning a stock for 10 years, then you shouldn't own it for 10 minutes. And I think if you are going in as a retail investor, this is really the mindset that you should have. You're really in it for the long term. 
Um, so let's see these um, two scenarios. Um, so this is my second advice, which is to invest broadly. So a lot of the time when I hear retail investors talking about how they invest, they, they do it a little bit like Billy. Um, they have their five thousand euros and they're really excited about these companies that they hear about in the news um, and they know that these businesses are innovative so they're really excited and buy uh, buy them so for example he will buy um, five different companies and put a k each in them um, this is really not diversified and therefore it's not safe so this person is uh, is buying um, two um, two two different industries only. So this, is, this is just tech and automotive. And they are picking stocks, um, which is incredibly speculative. If you really, if you don't know how to do it, don't do it. Um, so what you should be doing as a retail in, uh, investor instead is being more like Sandra. Um, she puts her money in funds and she spread her 5,000 euro in, in, in five different funds. Funds are a bundle of different companies, often containing 100 plus companies, and or bonds or other assets like real estate or gold. Um, and they are really, really spread. So they are spread across different countries and different industries. As a retail investor, this is what you're trying to look for, looking for this diversification, this the spread. Um, I know that it's really over, over, overwhelming if you start as a retail investor, you really have a lot of options in front of you. But if you take my advice uh, seriously, which is to think long term and to invest broadly, then I can wholeheartedly, especially as a beginner starting out, only recommend to you one type of investment vehicle, which are ETFs. Um, and I will go over why I think the ETFs are a great option, especially if you're starting out. So what are ETFs? ETFs are exchange traded funds. Um, basically, they are a fund. So they're a basket of different holdings. So different companies um, or bonds or, or also real estate. Um, what's interesting about them is that they are very broad, so they, represent, so they often represent entire markets. So, for example, you can buy a fund representing the whole U.S. market or the, or the, or the, or the whole European market, or you can go a little bit more detail, buying whole sectors like healthcare, for example. What's great about them is that they're really cheap. Um, and they perform just as well, if not better, um, if you compare them to actively managed funds or mutual funds. So I really don't see a reason to, to choose them over ETFs. Um, what's also nice is that they are flexible. You can buy and sell them uh, when the markets are open um, and you can get them for a relatively fair price because many people are buying and selling them constantly essentially and they are naturally quite diversified they often contain anywhere anywhere between 30 to 600 plus assets how do etfs work so like i already explained etfs are trying to uh, represent a whole market i'm sure if you're in germany you've heard of the dax so the dax is a representation of the german stock market it contains its 30 largest companies, and you can buy an ETF that um, represents the DAX. So this is an ETF that will contain all those 30 c c companies, for example. Um, you can do the same with other markets, like the American market. Um, there you have the Dow Jones. It's the oldest um, stock market. And here again, you can buy the ComStage Dow Jones ETF, which, um, which contains all the holdings of that market of the Dow Jones. And you can do this with many other markets. Um, so this is also where you have to do research about which markets you, you want to invest in. So what, the, what does the performance of such a long-term, broadly diversified investment look like? Um, so here we, we take the Dow Jones. I personally don't recommend buying it, but I'm using it here because it's the oldest um, stock market 
that there is. It's the oldest one. So here we're looking at its historical performance. Um, here we see um, how it performed between 1980 and 2020, so a 40-year period. During this period, it grew um, a thousand percent. Um, this is really awesome. Um, but as you can see, if you're zooming into individual time periods of, let's say, five or ten years, you can see that there's a lot of ups and downs, and you can also see that there are periods where the performance is um, staling. Um, and even more so, I know the performance over the long term is really showing this growth trajectory, but you, what you can also see are these gray bars. Um, they, re they represent re recessions. So during this time period, there were six recessions and we are going through a global recession right now, the COVID uh, crisis. Um, so this is really stressful and it's a time where a lot of people get very scared and worried and they sell um, their investment. This is a rookie mistake. Uh, don't do it, um, especially if you're looking to hold this money to save for long time periods like your um, ret um, retirement, then under no circumstance uh, should, you, should you exit if there is a crisis. Um, so I would like to focus a little bit more on sustainable ETFs because I believe that there should be the standard of how to build your portfolio. Um, also, you're really uh, um, lucky today because um, this is the time period where it's, po po where it's possible to build an entire portfolio consisting of sustainable uh, ETFs. Just five years ago, when I started, this was really not the case. It was very hard for me to, to be able to do my strategy with the selection out there, and now it's entirely possible. Um, so, um, and its foundation, um, the sustainability criteria are based on the U UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, but this is marked on the ETFs using the short ESG and SRI. So if you're looking for ETFs, then look for ESG and SRI in the title. Um, what they usually do is they exclude harmful companies and industries. And I'm sure you've heard a little bit about the criteria um, through MetaVest already. Um, but in short, they contain in mental, social and, and governance criteria. It's a really holistic approach to assessing a project or a company because they don't only take into account environmental criteria, but also how is the company um, treating its employees? How are they dealing with taxes? Um, what about diversity on the board or issues of corruption? Um, the ESG criteria really work. I know a lot of people are um, skeptical. Um, this is the Greener Guide from Greenpeace, where they looked at um, uh, um, the electronics companies. So this is really only looking at the, at the electronics process. And here you can see different companies. I'm sure you recognize uh, 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 some of them. You can see that there's a big difference in how sus sustainable they are. For example, the Apple here has a pretty decent score uh, on here. And you can see that uh, uh, Amazon, for example, is um, not scoring really well. And you find a similar thing with the ESG ETFs. Usually that, or basically always, that the Amazon stock is excluded because it does not meet basic ESG criteria, while the Apple stocks are almost always included. Um, here we're zooming into um, to a concrete example. I would like to show you um, the, uh, the, uh, the ETF on the, on the MSCI Europe. Uh, MSCI Europe is an index that re represents the European stock market. And here you can see um, comparing an ETF that is not uh, screened using sustainable criteria with an ETF that is um, socially responsible. So there has been a screening of what's inside the fund. Um, and you can see in the, uh, in the non-screen version that there are 435 companies and has a B from A plus to D rating. So it's not terrible, but it's also not great let's say, and you can see that there's companies that are in, involved in oil and gas, like BP or, or, or Repsol, here is uh, Rio Tinto, it's a mining company, and also, uh, also, uh, 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 also Nestle, who are on the news all the time for uh, corruption scandals and 
environmental devastation. And if you look at the screen version, it, it receives an A plus rating from independent rating agencies, and you end up cutting out 74% of all the holdings inside that ETF. This is um, quite a lot, uh, but still, you, you're still quite di diversified with the 100 fortunate companies. Uh, companies that stay are, for example, Unilever or, or SAP. On first glance, you, you might not go, wow, these companies are sustainable. But if you read the um, reporting, you will realize that they've done a lot in the past years to reduce their carbon footprint and that they have quite um, detailed and ambitious and transparent reporting and planning on how to improve their scoring in the future. Um, now let's focus a little bit on the performance. Uh, the, um, there is a common, let's say, steer, like misconception that sustainable f uh, uh, funds do not perform as well as unsustainable ones, but you, you'll find quite the opposite. Um, this is a graph of the past um, year, let's say, and here we are comparing the uh, European um, stock market ETF that is um, sustainable, so the, uh, the SRI version with an unsustainable version. And you see that during this uh, COVID crash, that is this um, steep dive, nose dive um, between March and April 2020, um, you can see that the difference in performance is really large. It's almost 8%. Um, this is really a lot. It's usually not this big. Um, but you find this over and over in other markets that the sustainable ETFs are beating uh, non-sustainable ones. So how can you find out whether an ETF is uh, sustainable? Like I said, you look for the short ESG or the SRI in the title. But what you can also do, and which I really like, is you can use Track Insight. Um, you go on uh, trackinginsight.com. You can type in the index in the search bar or the ETF in the search bar. And then you scroll down and you see here it's a um, sustainability rating from an independent agency. Um, I would really recommend you doing this because um, not all um, ETFs are equally sustainable. Um, these are two ETF bond funds that are considered ESG. But if you go on track in, tracking inside and you look at their uh, rating, one has a C and the other has an A plus. So besides looking at, at the title and reading the description, you should really check with independent rating agencies um, whether they are actually sustainable. So how do you start as a, a retail in, a, an investor? There's really two ways to do it. You can um, do it on your own, which in my opinion is the best, uh, 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 best way to do it. It's also the most empowering way to do it. Um, at first, you should learn the uh, basics of in, uh, in investing. To th today, I spend a little bit of time going over those, but you have to do your own research. I would also s uh, um, start with ETFs. Then you have to also understand yourself. You have to know your needs and your goals. Um, what's your what's your financial situation your, your, and your time horizon as well as your um, risk appetite? Then you do research on the on the strategy that you're trying to do. I recommend a globally diversified strategy that's that is matching the markets. You can also Google globally diversified portfolio and then um, you will have to do your own uh, um, research re regarding the markets and the different product options then you open an account with an online broker definitely use online brokers um, they're the most modern cheap and easy to use I really like Flatex, but you can use also Comdirect and then you can cre cre uh, create a portfolio um, for this I really like just ETF it's my favorite tool as a retail person it's it's really simple um, it has great the articles and objective um, yeah, tools where you can track and see the different ETFs and experiment with the portfolio. It's really easy to use, really use it. Um, and you can also, like I said, go, go and track inside to learn about the individual funds. Last thing you do is you have to maintain your portfolio. So um, once a year, at most twice a year, you, you go inside it, you rebalance, you reinvest your dividends in case your ETF um, releases dividends and you track it. So um, 
Sometimes maybe the ETF that you selected isn't the, uh, uh, the uh, best for your strategy or the index that you chose isn't maybe um, covering your strategy as you intended. Um, the market is a little bit unpredictable, um, but you should still a little bit double check, uh, did you do your research properly? But mostly stay away from your portfolio. Try not to look at it. Um, be patient and wait. <laughs> Um, or you use a platform. Um, this is the easier version. Um, it's less less money, and you need uh, sorry, you need less um, time and knowledge to do it. Um, but regardless, I would tell you to learn about the basics so, so you're aware of what you're doing. Um, and then you choose a robo advisor. This is how these the automated platforms are called. You can just Google robo advisor and research them. There's a big difference in performance, so not all of them are um, equally good. Um, of course, I would love you to use our platform, but you can use other platforms like Cominvest or Ginmon. And what you do there is you are going through an onboarding process where they ask you about your financial situation, your, your goal, your time horizon and your risk. And based on that, they automatically make a portfolio for you and manage it. And all you have to do is invest the, the money and you can track and withdraw the, the money at any time. This option, of course, is more expensive than doing it on your own, but it's also significantly cheaper than using an actively managed fund or mutual funds or um, talking to a financial advisor. Um, then, of course, I would be really excited if you choose our solution and invest with a Sage Fund. Um, I believe that we are the most rigorous regarding our sustainability criteria and we take sustainability really seriously. And for launch, we really we built the perfect beginner's portfolio. Um, as you can see here in the graph, um, our, our first portfolio is really st uh, stable in performance and it's perfect for shorter time horizons, like a few years. Um, and you can get it, uh, 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 withdraw your money anytime. And oh, sorry, let's go back. Yeah, so it's really a good place to start um, since it's not that um, volatile, especially if you compare it to the, uh, uh, the average uh, uh, stock market, which is the graph here in purple. Thanks for your time today and. Um, yeah, I would be really excited if you sign up and join our, our waiting list and you can uh, follow our progress at shfund.eu and you can message me anytime if you have uh, feedback or would like to talk about in investing. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Sana. I think that was really, really yeah. amazing. Uh, we don't Thanks. Have time quickly. So, and actually the good thing yeah. is that you did answer a bunch of questions which were coming during the presentation. Uh, what I'll do is I'll launch a quick poll for everyone to read the session. And also one thing that we're trying to test ourselves on is how much financial jargon are we using? So it's always a tricky thing in finance. Sorry. But no, that's okay. I mean, we have to, we all have to start somewhere. So uh, I'm going to launch the poll as we answer the questions we have, because we have two minutes to end this. And um, so everyone can uh, actually see the poll on their screens. So while we vote, uh, we will look at the questions. So, um, Sana, there's a question on ETFs, um, yeah. and uh, it's about the taxation of ETFs. Are yeah. ETFs in Germany taxed if it, if not reinvested? And do you think there's a case for tax debates on SRI ETFs? Um, they're not taxed differently, so they changed the laws. Like in the past, um, if they, if you didn't get any dividends, um, you wouldn't be taxed. But they changed this, um, and now everybody's paying twenty five percent. So if you are getting it dividends, these are taxed at twenty five percent. And if your DTF is growing in value, that difference in growth every year is also taxed at twenty. Percent, so um, you will be taxed whether it's um, accumulating or distributing. I think it's in the U.S. Apparently, it's not like that, but in Germany, uh, you get taxed no matter what, basically. Um, so uh, there's a question on ETFs and the morality of it. That ETFs are not investing in real assets. So mm -hmm. is it actually investing in the real economy? 
And if it's not investing in the real economy, how is it sustainable? Right. Um, I know that um, ET, um, it really depends on the ETFs that you're buying. So if your ETFs are synth uh, synthetic, then they're not in, in investing di directly in each of the co companies inside them. If they're synth synth synthetic, that means um, they have a deal, let's say, with a bank or a financial institution that that institution pays them out that performance and they make like a like a basket as a swap um, it's a little bit complicated but essentially if you if you want your etf um, to buy the real assets look for physically replicating etfs because then the, because then the fund actually buys each individual individual asset inside it okay and so now just yeah. to wrap up the session the last yeah. question is yeah. is the fee on sustainable products more than regular products Yes, it is. Yeah, at the moment it is. Um, the fee has been going down, but if you compare the the, the increase in performance, um, then the fees are easily paid for. So, like I showed you in the in the case of last year, it's been it's been an, an eight percent difference in performance. But you would not pay more than zero point two or zero point three percent more in fees. So it doesn't really um, outweigh, the fees don't yeah. outweigh the benefits. Cool, yeah. perfect, and that was the last question. So Sana, thanks Yay. a lot. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're welcome. I think it was an amazing session because thanks. Uh, it was tricky to do a session on finance while uh, not having a lot of jargon and I would like to share the results with everyone. And we've done a decent job, Sana, not so bad. Uh, so, uh, so thanks a lot for everyone for polling. Yay! I'm uh, very excited. Thanks everyone for watching. <laughs> so do check out Sage Fund. Uh, it will be out very soon, hopefully for all of us. And uh, with that, we can end this session. So now thanks a lot for joining us. For people yeah, who yeah. are uh, 